Good morning, Barb. How are you today? It's a beautiful day outside today. Shirley, thank you for watching today. Uh, Rolanda, nice to have you on. Hi, Kip. Good to have all of you guys. It's, uh, like I say, it's a beautiful June day out there. It got kind of hot yesterday, and I think they're expecting it to be kind of warm again today. But I love this time of year uh, with the days getting longer. And, and I'm not sure exactly. It seems like the first day of summer kind of moves back and forth between the 20th, 21st, or maybe 22nd. But uh, it's always good to... Uh, I, I love this time of year. It's a time when... Uh, I can uh, uh, just really enjoy the longer days. My wife's trying to tell me something, and I don't know what she's doing, but anyway. Send her yourself. Send her myself, she says. Okay, how's that? Um, I always need uh, Diane's help in, in the things that I do. If, if I didn't have that, I'd probably fall apart. But anyway, I, I love the, the long days. And, of course, we know the first day of summer is the longest day of the year. And uh, then after that, the days start gradually getting shorter and shorter, even up through the, uh, the, tw the 21st of December when the first day of winter comes. But anyway, as we gather together today, it's, it's, a, it's a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, hello, Linda. Valerie, it's good to have you with us. Val, bless your heart. You're in my prayers, Val. And uh, Annie, good to have you with us here this morning. Um, we're going to get started here in just a few minutes, uh, but uh, it's just good to have this time every morning where we can kind of gather, uh, even through uh, social media, to to just uh, join in fellowship. Uh, it's a wonderful time. You may meet, see me through the, this time taking on and off my glasses. I don't know. The doctor says I need to be wearing them all the time, but I sh and uh, they have bifocals and then they have long distance, but they, I it just have, I've struggled really getting used to them. But uh, that's just the way things are. As you get older, Things start getting a little bit weaker. Uh, but uh, we pray that uh, for each and every one of us who are in Christ, that our faith does not become weaker as we get older, but rather grow stronger. And uh, so anyway, uh, are there any prayer requests out there this morning? Good morning, Johnny. Any prayer requests at all? But uh, if you have them, just leave them on the screen. I know the, the ladies in our church office do such a wonderful job of uh, sharing those uh, through the prayer chain. And so those will get out to a lot of people to be praying. And so do that. Do that. Any summer plans for anybody? Big summer plans, vacations. Uh, getting the yard back in shape. That's one of my goals for this summer is trying to get on top of things. Hi, Deb. It's good to have you all here. Kathy, it's good to have you. We're going to get started here in just a moment or two. We'll give time for in case there's anybody else that, that needs to get on. But uh, I'll, I'll just clue you in right now. I'm going to begin in by reading scripture from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. So if you want to be turning to that in your Bibles while we're getting ready, we'll do that. And uh, one more minute, and we'll kick this thing off. Joyce, good to have you. I'm sorry I saw some of the names go by and I didn't get the chance to say anything. I think Summer was one of those. And, and uh, Kimmy, good to have you. We want to be praying for, for David. 
Uh, Connie, it's good to have you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, let's, uh, let's get into our time together this morning. First of all, I want to say I'm filling in for Ken this morning. Uh, Ken, uh, I think, is taking a little time away for this week, maybe, and uh, I know that he'll probably be back next week, so you can look forward to him being back on Tuesday. I'm just the fill-in guy, and uh, I know you'll be happy to have the, the regular back next week. So, But anyway, let's uh, begin this time this morning with just a word of prayer. And so if you will, will you bow your heads with me and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start off our time. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to come together in fellowship in the name of Christ Jesus. Thank you that we have your precious word that we can share and we can, we can grow on, we can learn from, and even model our lives after what uh, your word shares with us. And so, Lord God, as we partake of that today and as uh, um, we spend this time together, would you bless our time, our fellowship, and uh, uh, bless your word to the nourishment of our, our souls and spirits. And Lord God, even in reading and partaking of your word, our desire and our heart is to honor you. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I said, we're going to be looking at uh, 2 Peter and starting with chapter 3, verse 10. And in this, we see Peter's last words to the church, the churches of Asia, where he's telling us, be diligent, be steadfast. And not only do those words apply to the people of, of that day, but they apply to us this day. So let's, let's look at the word and let's read it together. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found in, by him in peace, without spot and blameless, and consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. As also our br beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given, wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wickedness. But grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. You know, as, as I look at this text, there are so many verses I could pull out and just talk on that. But the one verse I want to pull out today to focus on is verse 14, which says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him, to be found by him, in peace, without spot, and blameless. In these final words of Peter's second letter, his reminder was in regard to the coming day of the Lord. The Lord's second coming when he will come as a judge of the world and will dwell in righteousness with those who have called on him and are found in peace. Those who are found without will have decided their own fate, eternal unrest. In his first coming, Jesus dwelt with humans, experiencing all of the feelings, emotions, pains, and suffering that we experience. And in that first coming, he taught, he performed miracles, and he raised up followers to carry on the good news. That good news which we hold on to so tightly and so strongly uh, as Christians in this day, and is still accepted by new Christians 
today and will be even up until the time of his coming again. This second coming is so important that Peter wanted to make sure that the persons of that day and all the persons who would read his letter would have a reminder ever at hand. That reminder, be ready, living so as to be free of sin and to, not, and to be found in peace. In our humanness, we can be prone to think it would be helpful if we knew when Jesus was coming again. That way we could be sure we were ready. But I'm not sure but what that would be. I have just the opposite effect. But Jesus said, only our Heavenly Father knows when He will return. So it only makes good sense that we should be active in seeking His peace now. And as Peter shares throughout his letter, we must be diligent in living our faith in a way that trusts in and honors our Lord daily. And as Christians, we quite often pray for peace from war and violence and terror, and most rightly so. But that peace that Peter speaks of is different, and as he says, is to be found in us. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give. The peace then that we are to have in us is the peace he offers to us. And all we need to do is to receive it. Which requires, of course, a desire within ourselves to have it. Peace then, not as the world gives, would see it, which reminds me of God's prophecy through Jeremiah, because from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. Everyone deals falsely. They have also healed the hurt of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. They sought after the wrong peace a false peace, a hopeless peace. In the second chapter of Luke's gospel, the angel said, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Then a heavenly host praised God, saying, glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, goodwill toward men. These words seem to indicate peace not so much for the world or from the unrest of the world, but peace for each person. And not the peace that we manage to create or drum up or find in the world, but the peace and goodwill that God desires to give us through Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I will come again, speaking of his earthly return. And Peter said, make sure you are found in peace when he returns. It is a peace we find daily as we place our faith in him. And as he has given, all we need to do is to accept and to receive. I thank you for spending this time with me this morning and uh, I pray that even as you go about your day today that you would feel the peace of Jesus Christ living within you. Hold on to that peace and stand strong. Be diligent and steadfast even as Peter's word tells us. Let's pray as we close. Father, even as we uh, uh, look at your word today and as we spend time together, we, we are reminded uh, of the great goodness and grace and love that you have given to us. And it's a love that uh, we should hold on to, for in doing so, we are ready when that day comes, when you come again. We would be found in peace and we would be found pure and spotless through the very love of Christ Jesus in our lives. Father, we are, are thankful for the gift of life. We are thankful for the gift of your goodness and love. 
And truly, we are thankful for your word, which helps us to remain diligent and steadfast as we live out our lives each day. And so, Lord God, as we go forth into this day, go with us, we pray. Bless us and keep us and use us for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.